Welcome back everyone to the Bourbon Judge. Hope everyone's doing well. So first and foremost, you're probably wondering, Bourbon Judge, where were you on Sunday? Where's my video? Well, unfortunately, I try to put out a video at least every Sunday, but unfortunately this past week, I was a little under the weather and bourbon was the last thing from my mind. I know, no bourbon for the Bourbon Judge, but I was out, didn't feel well. But I'm back now and I wanted to bring back something and you know make it a little special for today. So for today, we're gonna go ahead and review a matchup, a battle of the barrel-proof, budget-friendly bourbons. That's a, that's a mouthful, say it again, Bourbon Judge. Barrel-proof, budget-friendly bourbons. I like that. All right, so um, honestly, I gave you from the point of view of, you know what, I walk into a liquor store quite often and I'm kind of choosing between two different products. A lot of times these are two that I choose between, right? So I thought a lot of my viewers out there might have the same situation. So I figured I'd try to help you guys and gals uh, by making a proper decision. So let's get into it. Um, but before I get started and kind of giving the history and so forth, let me just say uh, for a lot of the people that watch the channel, first and foremost, thank you. Uh, good friends like, you know, Carino, IBX Explosion, Cleveland Kid, uh, and many others, uh, Paul and so forth, many others out there. Thank you for watching. I do need your help though. I am trying to grow the channel, you know, just for my love of bourbon and my education of bourbon. So if you can share with your friends, family members, whomever, wherever, uh, please let them know about the channel. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. All right, back to bourbon, what we love. So let's talk a little bit about these two. So we have Elijah Craig versus Bell Mead, right? So Elijah Craig, barrel strength versus Bell Mead, cast strength, barrel strength, same difference. All right, so let's talk about them, right? So if you recall a few episodes ago, you'll remember episode 43, I did the Larceny review and I gave a ton of education about uh, Heaven Hill. I won't go in depth about Heaven Hill, but I'll just say Heaven Hill, again, they have a lot of sub brands. They have Larceny, Pikesville Rye, um, their own Heaven Hill product. And then of course they have Elijah Craig. So what makes Elijah Craig special? There's a couple of things. First and foremost, Elijah Craig is supposed to be the godfather <laughs> as it relates to the whole process of charring barrels, right? So as we know, when bourbon enters the barrel, um, it's entered into a barrel that has been charred um, and so forth. So Elijah Craig, or Reverend Elijah Craig, hundreds of years ago was supposedly the person who invented that. I was not there, so I cannot deny or confirm that statement. But he has that claim and the name Elijah Craig, Reverend Elijah Craig, goes to the bottle. So we're gonna go with it for today. It sounds cool. Um, but uh, let, let's talk a little bit more about this one. So every year, Elijah Craig, I think starting back in about 2013, they've been putting out really three releases per year as it relates to this, uh, this barrel proof, right? So they have, um, you'll see here, this one, the one we're reviewing today, it is batch B519. So you're probably wondering, what does that mean, Bourbon Judge? So batch B means this must be the summer edition. They do a spring, summer, fall, or winter edition. So B means it's for the summer one. Five stands for the month, so the month of May. And then 19, so I got this in May of 2019, or that's at least when it was produced. I probably bought it a month or two later, right? But this is the second batch that came out last year of the Barrel Proof Bourbon. I got it, um, and uh, obviously I've uh, had a chance to enjoy it a little bit. Um, so that's good old Elijah Craig. And about Bell Mead, I'm not gonna go into too much about Bell Mead, but I'll give you just very high level. So Bell Mead is a bourbon, and this one, by the way, I should say Elijah Craig is out of good old Kentucky. Go Kentucky Bourbon. Um, Bell Mead is actually out of Nashville. So I had a chance to visit Nashville and visit what they refer to as the Green Briar Distillery. And you're probably thinking, well, Bourbon Judge, I've never seen Green Briar Distillery on the bottle. It says Bell Mead. Where, where does it say uh, Green Briar Distillery? Let me give you a little education. So if you look at this bottle coming in, see that? Nice, beautiful bottle, right? So Nelson or Greenbrier Nelson Distillery was a distillery that opened back in the late 1800s. The open late 1800s was doing very well. One of their sub brands was called Bell Mead. They worked with a company called Spade, uh, I think it was uh, Sperry and Wade, um, who owned a plantation, a horse uh, plantation or horse farm called the Bell Mead Horse Farm. As part of that, they created this sub brand, which is uh, Bell Mead, right? But Greenbrier, like many other distilleries back in Prohibition, unfortunately went out of business and the company went, you know, kibbutz, all the sub brands, including Bell Mead, was gone. Fast forward uh, to just about, what, 20 years ago or so, 
um, the great grandsons of uh, Mr. Nelson was traveling around with her family in the Nashville area, came upon a sign and saw, hmm, Greenbrier, you know, local Greenbrier Distillery was here, right? Like a, almost like a, um, a, a monument, if you will, right? They've heard a lot of great stories about someone in their family at some point owned a distillery, but you know, in a lot of ways, he probably thought it was just like a moonshine and not an actual person. Lo and behold, they got in touch with the Historical Society, found an actual bottle of the Greenbrier Distillery bourbon and the Bellmead bourbon um, that was produced from many, many hundreds of years ago uh, at the local, let's call it like the Nashville, the Tennessee area uh, Historical Society. And in conjunction with MGP, they are now producing their juice. So I say all that to say two things. Number one, very cool story, right? The whole family kind of finding out the grandsons or great grandsons, uh, finding out about their lineage, if you will. And then more important, um, them just, you know, you know, finding that, but then also having the courage to get investors and start up and they, they recreated the Bell Me brand and, and do so in conjunction with leveraging obviously MGP out of Indiana to produce their juice. So MGP is producing their juice as it relates to the Bell Me brand. But again, for their own juice, they are now producing their local juice, Greenbrier Distillery. That's the bottle right here. That one is uh, not as widely known. You don't see that a lot. It's a little bit younger. They are starting to kind of, you know, grow up a little bit, right? But they're starting with the Bell Mead by working with MGP. So that's the two bourbons. All right, so how do they compare price-wise? Both bourbons are $60. As I said earlier, they are, they are budget-friendly bourbons. So $60 each, both for the most part, pretty easy to find, not that difficult. You may have to go to a couple different liquor stores, but for the most part, they're pretty easy to find as a whole. And then when you're looking at proof, so the one that I have for Elijah Craig is 122.2 proof, right? And for Bell Mead, we're coming in at 118.8, right? So these are truly, I mean, they're they're right there in the same category. When you're thinking about bourbons, you're saying, bourbon judge, which one do I buy? Which one do I not buy? I'm going to help you out with that today, okay? All right. And then the last thing as I uh, open this one up here, the last thing I'll say about uh, from an age statement so Bell Mead is technically a no age statement for the cast strength. However, they do state that they use a blend of anywhere from a seven to 11 year old barrel strength bourbons, right? So anywhere from seven to 11 year old barrel strength bourbons. That's the, the age statement technically. It's a blend, but a blend of barrel strength bourbons. All right, pour a little bit there. And for Elijah Craig, for the Elijah Craig, they use 12 year old uh, barrel string bourbon. It's not a single barrel because they do use like a small batch. They do blend it, but they're blending only barrel string bourbons that are, are that are aged for 12 years. All right, so you got them both poured. Let's go ahead and get into these beautiful, lovely bottles. All right, both very nice, similar color, right? Nice, great on, on the on the eye. Very dark, dark brown. Very nice. All right. I'm gonna start with uh, Elijah Craig. Has a cool story. Well, they both technically do, but we'll start with uh, Elijah Craig to start it off. Okay. So from a no standpoint, from Elijah, let's get a little bit more in this. Hmm. I get a lot of the brown sugar. Hmm. Lots of hints of like caramel, some cinnamon. A little bit of rye, that spice. Mm. Okay, all right, well, best part of bourbon, as we know, is tasting, so cheers. Ooh, that caramel, brown sugar, the cinnamon, almost like, the, like a little bit of fruit in there too, but like kind of hidden almost like some uh, apricots, kind of hidden in the back there, right? It's just a little bit in the back, a little bit of sweetness from a fruit in the background there. Let me get a little bit more. Mm. Very nice. Goes down very smooth. For a barrel string bourbon, goes down smooth. I mean, it has a little bit of a bite, but just enough to say, hey, I'm a, I'm a barrel string bourbon. You're not sipping any watered down bourbon here, right? This is straight barrel string, but it's smooth at the same time. Phenomenal quality. Uh, you get a lot of that uh, maple syrup, 
uh, a lot of that caramel, the brown sugar, all kind of blended together. Very nice and just well-rounded and bold at the same time. Not a bad value for $60. Let me get a little bit of H2O, to kind of clear the uh, palette here real quick. Mm. All right, now on to Bell Mead. Drum roll. That was a good one, sorry about that. All right, Bell Mead, beautiful color. Very nice. Let's get into the nose a little bit here. All right, so Bell Mead is, uh, from the nose standpoint, completely different than that one. I don't get a ton of like the brown sugar off the nose. I get more oak, more spice, more peppery. A lot more pepper in the nose, which is different. So, see which one's better. Cheers. Mmm. Wow. That's really nice, too. <laughs> well, this is a close one. So, with this one, it's very... Um, it has a lot of hints of, like, spice and rye. In, in, in the nose, but also in the palate. It almost tastes like a, um, kind of reminds me in many ways of like, like a, um, oh, it almost tastes as if like there was like some wine in here, but there's no port finish. There's no port finish on this at all. It has a lot of sweetness to it, uh, which you would normally get from like a port finish or any other type of like a wine finish, but there's no wine finish to it. But it has like almost that sweet kind of dessert finish. Very, uh, just sweet overall. Let me get a little bit more though. Okay, smooth finish, smooth, a little bit on the sweeter side in terms of more traditional sweet. I think of like more dessert sweet, where this one had, even though it had brown sugar and so forth, this one was more like just natural bourbon sweet. This one reminded me of more of like a dessert. I'm thinking of like, I wanna eat a piece of pie or cake or something, which is interesting, right? And it has, I guess because it has like that wine, it tastes like a wine finish in many ways. It's a little spicier at the same time. And it's just overall, it's, it's very nice. So you'll ask me, Bourbon Judge, if I'm only spending $60, I'm not buying it both for 120, which one am I gonna buy? Judgment is in. Folks, first and foremost, I'm gonna tell you that both of these are buys. I like both of them, hands down. But if I had $60 left and I'm only buying one, it might be a surprise to you. I'm buying, uh oh, hold on. I'll be honest, I'm buying Elijah Craig, right? Now you probably think to yourself, Bourbon Judge, you just said last week that the larceny, or two weeks ago, the larceny wasn't good. Oh, this is not larceny, this is the Elijah Craig. Completely different palette. This to me is way more of a overall well-rounded bourbon. I really enjoy it. Um, it's up there in my category of a budget-friendly barrel-proof bourbon. It's really up there. I just like the overall profile as a whole. Like I said, this one reminded me almost, it almost kind of threw me in a way because it had like that, the sweetness. I was thinking more like, like spicy, um, almost like a dessert type of a bourbon, if you will. It was very odd in a way, but it's still very good at the same time, right? Because it does have that complexity. But when I want traditional barrel strength bourbon, reminds you of barrel strength, but it's well-rounded at the same time. It has a phenomenal nose and palate. And for the price point, I'm going with Elijah Craig, at least this version, B519, <laughs> right? Very, very good. Again, folks, thank you for watching today's video. Please subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye-bye.